And in this project, I'm going to replace this crank-up antenna with something that works a little better. And I don't know why manufacturers still use these antennas. They're really not all that great, and there's a lot better selections available now. And by the way, while I'm up here, I think I'll just clean this. According to the manufacturer, both the RV manufacturer and the manufacturer of the roof, this comes from the ends of the treated lumber that's used for the roofing material. And eventually, as the preservative gases out of the lumber, this is supposed to go away. But for now, we'll just clean it off. And this is so common that uh, some people started calling this the Grand Design Stripe. And I'm looking at two different antennas. And one recommends a minimum of 8 inches from the edge of the antenna to the edge of the roof to keep the thing from blowing off as you're going down the road. And the other one recommends 12, and I'm right here at 12 inches. So either antenna that I'm looking at will work. And you know, I don't like getting up on the roof of my RV much anymore. I bought this nice 10 foot podium style ladder, 300 pound capacity, and that's just perfect height for working up on the roof. And I can reach about halfway over to the roof without having to get onto it. And for this project, I actually went out and bought two different antennas. Now, I didn't have these given to me for a review or anything. I went out and bought them independently. So you can know that my review is going to be an independent review. The first one is this Weingard Razor Automatic uh, HD TV antenna, and it is around $300. The second one is a King Roof Mounted Directional HD TV antenna. It's about $120. And then I bought the additional patch plate to cover up the existing antenna holes if you have an antenna like I did and that was another thirty dollars or so and I'm probably going to sell the one I don't use this is an automatic antenna which means that it's going to look for the strongest signal and it's automatically going to turn the antenna to that signal however there may be other stations in the area that you may want to manually override the automatic tuning and tune those in by turning the antenna in that direction and there is a little control panel that allows you to do that and for this one I've seen a couple of cases where these have busted off I don't know if they're busting off because the manufacturer installed them too close to the roof edge or for some other reasons maybe they hit you know a tree or something who knows this one is a low profile and there are no moving parts externally once I put it up there I don't have to worry about cranking it up I don't have to worry about you know, getting ripped off by a tree limb or anything, whereas this one, you could get a branch on the head or whatever and it could pop off. I'm going to pull the old antenna, clean the roof up, and just set both of them on top and just see which one I like the best before I actually make the final decision. And we have a TV here, and this is what's got to come out. So I'm going to pull all this down and we'll take this out. And the other thing I don't like is the connectors I use are exposed, and there's all kind of metal around here, so it won't take much to short these out. That needs to be a different style connector. And so when I pull these wires off, I put a little heat shrink around them so they won't short out. And I also noticed that the coax here is bent way, way too sharp. And when you do that, you're just asking for trouble. Coax manufacturers typically recommend that the bend radius is no less than five times the diameter of the coax. So for a typical RG6 coax, we're looking at a radius about one and a half to one and three quarters inches or a diameter of three to three and a half inches and as you can see in the installation that black coax is bent much sharper than that next i have to remove this crank mechanism which looks like it's held on just with some screws and so with about a dozen screws off here i was able to take it off there's a base plate on here i have to take off yet but this is really kind of rubbery and thin this roof and it's already ripped here in a couple spots. I got quite a repair job to do here. And as I pull this white plate off, I see yet more poor installation practices. This is by far too sharp of a bend. And I'm not too happy on how this roof is bubbled right here. It's, I think, because it's so hot out today, I think that's the difference in temperature has made this ripple a little bit. So I think I'm going to cover this up for a while, see if I can cool it down and see if it stretches out a little bit. Well, here's the adapter plate for the King antenna. And you'll notice it still allows the gap here. And here is the one for the other antenna. Still a gap. And I initially patched it with a turnabond. 
problem is there's quite a hole right here, maybe two inches in diameter. And I thought I might just put a big piece of metal over it, but then it says don't install the antenna on top of metal because it may interfere with the signal. And really the only solution that I have to patch the roof is to cover it with a piece of plastic. And I've got two plastics here. This is HDPE, high density polyurethane. And below it is polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Between the two, this stuff is not UV rated. You can buy HDPE UV rated, but this particular stuff isn't. So you'd have to paint this or else it's going to yellow and then it can start cracking. And in fact, this is more brittle than the PVC anyway, and you can crack it. This is 1 8 inch thick PVC, and it's fairly easy to work with. Works well with the paint and with caulking, and so this will caulk a lot better. And in fact, this, if you remember at the beginning of the video, was a cover for the uh, King uh, antenna. This is also made out of PVC. And unfortunately, the only stuff I could find that wouldn't take forever to order is in kind of a dark gray. So here is the cover, the patch. Looks a little bit big. And I painted it uh, kind of a tan. And then I went through and went back and ground out everywhere that the uh, caulking is going to adhere to. And I pre-drilled all the holes because if you try to drill this with a regular drill, you can crack it. And basically it's going to set like that with this being towards the back. And I've got a blue C cable clam that goes in here. The wire will come out of here and loop into there. And when you're drilling into plastics, you need some specialized drill bits. And these have a different angle chamfer because a standard drill bit will crack the plastic. And now I'm going to apply some butyl tape to the underside of my patch. And here we're pre-locating it and I'm marking some spots. Then I'll take the beetle off and set it down. And I'm making sure that I'm away from any joists. So, for example, I'm drilling here for the cable. And the joist is about right here. And the patch is on. And one thing is you want to make sure you don't crack anything. So you might want to finish the job, the tightening by hand. We have uh, some thunderstorms in forecast for tomorrow, so I want to get uh, some goop on here to seal it first. So we'll seal it tonight. And this caulking is on, and it's supposed to be self-leveling, which means it should smooth itself out overnight. And we'll come up tomorrow and see if we need to put another coat on. And I'll actually put another coat on when I put the uh, antenna on as well. And to review the manual, it specifies a minimum of 12 inches from the antenna to the side of the roof and 24 inches from the front of the antenna to the front of the roof, as shown here. And I had to contact Weingard even to get that information as to why they had those specifications. And while they did not specify the roof shape, I'm looking at the worst case scenario here and looking at a roof that's kind of flat at the front. And while they did not specify it, I'm looking at the scenario with a roof having a 24-inch flat spot in front of it. And as you can see in my graphic, a large part of the air is going to be diverted over the antenna, while it'll still have some direct airflow as shown in the yellow. However, with my RV, the roof tends to slope almost immediately in front of the antenna. Now the slope is not drastic, and if you go out 60 inches, that's kind of where you would consider the top edge of the roof to be, it's probably going to get a little more direct airflow, I would think. So my solution is to add a cleat block under the roof to give the front foot of the antenna a little more material to sink into. And the roof itself is probably no more than 3 8 inch of plywood, where the cleat block is another 3 quarters of an inch. And I use oak for the block because oak is a lot more dense than even plywood or pine or any of that kind of thing. And so the screws are going to have a lot more bite to them. And I didn't want to go through the rafter because it does look like it's pine and it is certainly nothing that is heavy duty like oak. And I was afraid I might split the rafter with the screws and certainly that's the thing you don't want to do. With some trepidation we were able to get this block in there. And while it's probably a good idea to do it anyway, 
Hopefully this is a solution with any anticipated extra airflow going over the antenna as we're going down the road. And so now we've got the antenna on and it was just too difficult to try to make a video of this while I was doing it. So this is the best I can do to show you what it looks like after the fact. And at this point we've got the KO clam in. And the reason I like them is because it maintains a nice smooth and graceful bend here instead of being a real sharp bend. And then I also put some silicone tape on the connector and it may not look pretty but you know it's what it is and this is where the crank went and they give you in the kit this little four and a half inch or five inch uh, little plate that covers it and basically you just put this little nylon bracket on here and then push the plate in and my mind is thinking maybe i could put a speaker in here someday and now i'm trying to identify the wire so we can connect the uh, new console up and I run across these cute little tabs uh, that I can use to identify the wires. And basically they're like this, and you just print them out on a laser printer. And so this is the console that's got to go up here. And I did find a little wedge like this that will go here like that, so it'll kind of drop it down a little bit. Now one thing I found is that when this is turned off, it still has a standby current of 80 milliampers, which that seems like a lot. So... I added an on-off switch here so that I can shut it completely off for boondocking or something. And also I put in one of my surge protectors. We'll wire this into it. As soon as I figure out where the rest of these go, I attempted to wring out all the cables to find out where they all went. Because this is the old power supply and it has four connectors. So we have cable, antenna, and two televisions plus a satellite and TV this side. The new one has a single connector on the front for a TV plus uh, three connectors. And I'm using this tester. Put one of these little terminators on one end of the cable and then the tester on the other end. Then we depress the button. You can see a green light comes on for red so we know that that's the red cable. However, when I started to test the cable that goes to the living room TV, the little red light come on down here which means a short. and when I pulled on the connector, it would go from short to open. So maybe I have a bad connector. So I snipped it off. And then used my meter. Nope, I still got a short. So then I snipped the other end off. Same thing, still got a short. So now I know there's a problem with the cable. Oh joy. And I was able to uh, pull it back up until we go to one of these lights. And from there, I was able to trace the cable going through the ceiling here and into the bathroom and then I lost it somewhere in here and I pulled the shroud for the vent and I couldn't find it. I know where the other end of the cable is and it goes down this wall down into the basement and then when I pull the front of the panel off I can find the cable there and it's that tan one right there and that goes all the way down into the floor where I can get to. That's where I cut the other end off. And you can see the tan wire, orange wire, and violet wire. And you can also see maybe the tan wire where they pierce the cable with a staple. So while you're away, I ran a whole new coax cable from here all the way down to the TV. Get rid of that one that had a vampire bite in it. And when I'm reassembling, I started off with a low voltage outlet box and then everything else will attach to that. The second step is to put this angled box in with a switch on the side. And now we have the third piece in. And if I zoom out, we have the TV hooked up. And we'll turn it on. And if I want to do a scan, push that button. And then it's going to find where the strongest signal is at. And it's done with a scan, that green arrow, which means that way it found eight stations and then it found some in the yellow and some in the red. And we're doing our initial channel scan. We're almost done here. It looks like we've got 39 channels. So that's pretty impressive. 100% signal strength on the channel. And there we are. We have the antenna in and it's about 17 inches to the edge of the RV. Perfect.